Alrighty, so in this video what we're going to be talking about is the floating action buttons or button if you're just going to use one, right? And so this is pretty cool because we've already looked at buttons, the button group, and in this section what's going to be interesting is that it's like your ordinary button except it's got a bit more pop to it. And so I could foresee something like this being used maybe at like the bottom of a page, maybe to look like you know, your typical iPhone navigation, some of those iPhone apps have like the three or four navigation buttons at the bottom for you to jump between screens or whatnot. And I think this has a definite role um, fulfilling that kind of feature if you want it, or if you just kind of want to give some extra pizzazz to your page. So let's go ahead and get started on here. So first we have to import, we always have to import fab. You're probably thinking, oh God, what is that fab? I came here to learn some code, not to learn some uh, fashion lessons, but you'll see uh, how this all works. And so some of the stuff I'm just going to kind of rip out of the actual material UI page and then explain, talk you through it, whatnot. Cause some of y'all are visual learners, right? I definitely am. Let's see, let's do this add icon. And let me just uh, take this right here and this will help me out. Actually, no, because that's from ah, uh, that's from the icons. All right, come back in through here. Actually, coming through here. And let's just let's just bring it all in all the stuff I'm going to use. If you're curious about these icons, um, in the description there's going to be the npm uh, or npx, whatever you should use install for the icons as well. It's separate from material UI, but you could just include it in the same um, like download procedure. And then we have a favorite icon. And then this should be the last one for the example. Let me spread this out because I kind of hate when there's not a lot of space. Because sometimes you're looking at a tutorial and you're like, what is going on off the, the side of the page there? All right, so we have this. And if there's any kinds of issues later, who cares? Okay, we got those issues. All right, beautiful. So the only things that um, should be issues are, um, oh yeah, it's just, see? This is what happens when you uh, you copy and paste and you think everything is uh, mirrored on over. Okay, so now we're good. So what we're gonna come in here and do, and you could put this in a grid, you could put this in a container, you could do all that, but I think it's best if you do it atomically and just show you what it looks like. Uh, from there, you could you know, introduce actually you know, putting it into a page, styling it up. So what we're first gonna do is we're gonna take that fab element here, and we're gonna come in here and let's give it a color. So we know by now, any kind of button related thing, we can give a color. And so let's just do primary and in the example here in the documentation they have an aria label now aria labels are interesting because if we're talking about like usability and stuff like that especially someone who doesn't have eyesight the memory serves me right this is a way when they're going through and using a special program they'll know that this button right here is for adding so if you had one for editing, subtraction, submitting, those are important as well. Also, ARIA labels are important if you're testing. Say you're using uh, the testing library by Kent C. Dodds. You know, the ARIA label may be a way or a role, um, may be a way that you are uh, accessing your elements here to test them. But without further ado, let's come here and let's use the um, add icon. And we should be good to go here. So we see right here, it, it's kind of popping out here. So imagine if you had like, 
you know maybe a gray background or whatever it is on your page this looks a lot more visually interesting than your standard button you could see the drop shadow down here um, which makes it seem like it's hovering a bit and I think it'll have more of an impact um, if we were to add you know more items alongside so let's add more floating action buttons here so instead of that let's just go to edit icon come here to edit and for those who may be going into the professional world or are in college whatever just learning need a refresher or whatnot uh, most likely when you get something into production there will be a, a UX usability team however it's configured so it's just kind of good practice in advance to like label your stuff so if a person who's hard as psych is using your stuff um, they could use it too because if we're looking at it from a revenue perspective as well um, you know your company doesn't want to miss those 10,000 15,000 people that may use your service also it's the kind of like don't be a dick thing right you know everyone um, could use the internet and even if it takes some people a bit longer just go the extra mile for them so we're going to come in here we're going to do uh, secondary And so we have this right here. So that's that's pretty interesting. That's pretty neat. And if we wanted to as well, what we could do is actually that's wrong. Let me take that out. That's not what I wanted to do. Come in here. We have edit in there. It doesn't look that great, but um you know how do, how do I make that interesting you know I'll show you actually in the next example because the documentation here doesn't necessarily spell it out really well but once you see how they how you want to add text and an icon side by side we're gonna come up here and redo this so let's come down here let's just slap that back in again and let's do um, let's not let's not give it a a color just so I can mimic as much as I can there but let's give it a variant now what we see here is extended so now we could have the navigation icon but we could put next to it navigate to Taco Bell it's my uh, girlfriend and I's uh, anniversary this weekend one year woohoo and uh, maybe I can convince her to go to Taco Bell so we could see here is that we have navigate to Taco Bell and it's not as scrunched up as it is here there's actually quite a bit of space so what if we were to take this up here and move it on up I don't know it was experiment right it's coding it's kind of uh, cheap to make mistakes so let's do it and let's uh, drop this down a little bit just so it's a little bit easier to follow and we can see now that it expands and is more elastic for the extra content we're putting in here right whereas before it was all kind of like hunched up and jammed together so if we wanted to continue you know what's in the documentation here we could add uh, disabled like you know you probably figured out by now just about any kind of button you could have has the ability to be disabled and straight out of the documentation favorite icon so you see that this is disabled, but if you wanted to, you could come in, you could delete that. And they have this pretty red you know, thing here. If you wanted to with the icon um, and the styles, I'm sure you could override it to make this like pink or use your own or make it red, salmon, whatever color it is you want. Um, you could override these or use your own that are a color to put them in here, but that's how you would make it disabled. So yeah, this is pretty much the basics when it comes to the uh, floating action buttons. And um, that's uh, it's pretty as simple as it looks. Um, like, share, subscribe, twerk on that subscription button, whatever you want to do, it's a free world. Uh, see ya.